Hello, this is Adam from V Fuels, and today I'm going to show you how to open the World Builder for Company Heroes 2 and then how to save a map. Okay, first thing you need to do is go to Start Computer, then head to where your Company Heroes 2 is installed. Uh, the default is in the C drive. Program Files, down to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Company Heroes 2, and straight down to the bottom. There it is, World Builder. Now, if you double click on that, uh, this box should load up the debug window, which is just telling you what World Builder is doing, and this box is the actual World Builder. Okay, now to start a map, go to File, New Multiplayer Map, and give it a name. I call mine Video Test. As you can see, it's saving it as a .sgb file. Remember that for later when I'm talking about the uh, two different file types. And as you can see, it's saving it to Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Company Heroes 2, Data, Scenarios, MP. If it doesn't default to that, you're going to have to go and make the folders first. OK. Now click Save. Uh, this box is asking you how big you want the canvas to be and the playable area inside that canvas. So if we keep it like this and then make the player area, playable area a bit bigger, we click OK. If it's load, and there we go, there's our blank canvas that we're going to be working with. Now to see the playable area, go to overlay and then toggle show playable area. Playable area is um, well everything inside the red square is where you can interact with and that's where you can place things that can be manipulated. So anything outside the area is untouchable. That's for creating backgrounds to this, the actual map. Okay, now there are three things that you need before you can save a map. You need to have um, map entry points for each player, uh, starting positions for each player, and you need to make sure that the territory between each player is separated. Okay, they're very easy to do. So first, we're going to do the starting positions. So if you go up here to Object Placement, left-click it. Object Placement looks like uh, a tree and a little guy. You can see a big toolbox on the right side has now opened up. So if you go down to EBPS, double-click it, and Gameplay. Scroll down to starting position, there it is. And right click on the canvas to put it down. Now, if we go back up here, oh, sorry, put down two, one there, one there. Or, well, as many as you like, really. And you see over here on the right where it says current and then default. What we want to do is mess with the current box. Where it says player assignment, instead of having it on world, which means neutral, nobody owns this starting position, set it to player 1. So that is where player 1's HQ will now be. And for the other one, do it for player 2. Okay, once you've done that, go back down to this EPPS gameplay box here and get the map entry point. It's all in alphabetical order, so it's easier to find if you know your alphabet. <laughs> and put the map entry point in the same sort of territory as the HQ. Okay, to turn it like I did then, you have to hold shift and move your mouse. Again, just like the starting points, you need to uh, assign these to a player. So if you assign that to player 1, and assign this to player 2, Okay, the map entry point is where the the players call in uh, units. It's where the units walk in from. Now, if we go back to here and find a territory thing, territory point. So uh, the fuel point, we place one there, and we place one there, away from the HQ. What we're going to do is we're going to separate the territory. So it means that this HQ and this HQ aren't in the same territory. So they've each got their own individual command area and these points will have their own territory. 
to do this, you go up here to TER territory, left click it, as you can see it's all changed, and click on calculate Veroni on the right side. And there you go, it's painted an invisible it's painted the canvas with invisible paint, basically. And this is the command area for the HQ. This is the territory area for this ter uh, this point. This is the territory area for this point. And there's the other command area for that HQ. You have to separate these. Otherwise, it won't work in-game. Um, you can change how this is all laid out, the territory. But I'll do that in another video. Just to keep this video short, I won't tell you now. But you can paint it and make it bigger and short, like increase and decrease the area of the territory. Okay, so if we to get rid of that, go on overlay, toggle overlay. There we go. Um, okay, now it's time to save the map. So if we click the save button here, there should be no errors. And yep, there are no errors. Uh, you'll know if you've got errors because a box will pop up saying uh, this, this, and this is illegal, or there are errors here. Okay, so now the map is saved, but it's saved as SGBs. Um, if you want to export everything as one file, that means put all the SGBs from this video to uh, this map together. You go to File, Export Package. What this export package is now done, it's put everything together in one big file. So that means if you want to give it to your friends, you can give them this SGA and then you can all play together I'll show you where it's saved I'll just minimize this the SGA is saved in your documents my games company heroes 2 mods and scenarios if you don't have those folders you're gonna have to do it yourself um, you can see there's video test and there's another one I've done before uh, your modded games are also saved in subscriptions there, ones you've downloaded from Workshop. Okay, so that is how you save a map on World Builder. You need the three things. Starting position, uh, assigned to players. Map entry points, assigned to players. And then you need to calculate the territory. So everything is separated and not in one big territory. Okay, I hope that's helped. If it hasn't, uh, drop a comment or uh, give me a message. Thank you for watching.